Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to solve a very nice mechanics question that combines torque and forces and a lot more other ideas. So you can see the question on the board right now. And this is a question by a man named John Calder. And I will attach the website that I found the questions, the PDF that I found the questions. So you can find that from the descriptions part. I really like this question. And we are given the picture. I will tell you what it is and then we will solve it. And if you can, uh, if you can also try it if you want. So we are given this system with a hello cylinder of mass M rolling without slipping on an inclined plane with an angle of alpha. It is 45 degrees. And inside that hello cylinder, uh, there is a little mass M. It isn't very little. It is half of the mass of the cylinder. Okay, we have this and we are asked the angle beta. Beta is defined as, uh, is the, I mean, you can see it, but let me say it. This is the point where the cylinder touches the inclined plane. This is a 90 degrees angle. And the other thing is what, com what is, uh, this is the, let's say it like this. This is also 90 degrees. It gives the position of little m with respect to, the center. Now we are told M is moving freely in inside the hello cylinder. There is no friction, but of course between the cylinder and the incline, there will be a friction because there is rolling without slipping. Anyways, if you want, you can stop the video and try it on your own and then let's do it together. All right, here we go. So a very, very important step in this question is to draw the forces very, very carefully. And let's do that. I will draw the cylinder on a new, let's do it here, not on a new page. Let's do it here. I drew it very large because it is really important that we see what is going on. Now, there will be, of course, a force of gravity. It will be from the center downwards. This is mg. There will be a normal force exerted by the inclined plane. And that will be, let's say that this is the direction that will be upwards like this. This is N. And notice I am not drawing a free body diagram. Not exactly. I am just drawing a force diagram, which I think is more helpful for this question. We have it like this. And there will be a force of friction by the inclined plane. We know it because... There is no slipping and the force of friction will be up the incline in such a manner. This is going to be F with subscript little f force of friction. Now, are we done? You might think so, but no, there is one other force which is quite important actually. And that force is the normal force by the little mass. What can we say of it? Well, it will be exerting a downward force on our uh, cylinder. So if we draw the direction, it will be something like this. And it will be along this direction. It will be downwards, as we said. And let's call this N1. Also, remember that this angle is beta. Cool. Now, also, let's draw a diagram for little mass. It will be easier. Then the cylinder, there will be less forces to deal with. So we have M, oops, that's not a box. So we have M. There will be a gravitational force on it as well. It will be downwards again. This is Mg. And there will be a normal force on it, N1. Now, what will be the direction of the normal force? It will simply be opposite with the direction of the force that we have already drawn because we use Newton's third law. Action, reaction, they are equal in, equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So it will, it will be upwards and it will be like this. All right. So, I mean, if we were to draw it on the cylinder, it would look like this. Okay, it is opposite in direction, equal in magnitude. Cool. Now, with that, actually, you know what? I don't like this picture. Let me draw it clearly. 
I don't want anyone to be confused. Let me be a little more specific. So, all right, it is like this. I hope this is more explanatory right now. So we got this. And now I want to choose a coordinate system. How can I choose it? Well, I will choose the classic way while we deal with inclined planes. And that is an axis parallel to the incline, which is x, and another one that is perpendicular to the incline, which is y. So we got this. And now let's write forces. And you know what? Actually, before starting to write forces, we need one more angle. We need an angle. We need this angle. It, let me draw the horizontal, the x direction I mean. We need this angle. And how can we figure it out? Well, it is not that complicated, actually. I will draw another line that is parallel to the dashed one that we draw, drew before. And now perhaps it is obvious now. So notice this. This dashed line is parallel to the incline and this uh, and this N is perpendicular to it, which means this is a 90 degrees angle. All right, so that means all of this is 90 degrees minus beta. And that is exactly going to be the angle that we are looking for. So this is also... 90 degrees minus beta. All right. We got that. And also we can use this fact on the on the force diagram for little mass. So N1 was like this. Which means if we. So we drew the inclined plane. If this is 90 degrees minus beta, then this part then let's do it with orange. Then this part is also 90 degrees minus beta. All right. Now we are in fact ready to write force equations. So let's switch to kind of white, I guess. This is the direction of the acceleration. And here we go. So the acceleration will only be along the inclined plane. Which means we can start with the horizontal, the x, I mean, not the horizontal, but with the parallel direction to the incline. In that case, we will have mg. I am writing, I am starting with the cylinder. We have mg. Then which component of it is along the incline? I mean, this is a confusing picture, so it might be hard to get what it is, but actually we don't even need to do some geometry. It is simply going to be sine of alpha. And why is that? Let me argue it very brief briefly. If we have any incline with alpha and we have mass m on it, mg is downwards. Okay, and if we draw the normal force direction, this angle, oops, this angle is also alpha. That's why we get mg sine of alpha. Even though we have a much more complicated system, the component of mg along the incline doesn't change. That's why we simply write mg sine of alpha. Cool. Now let's focus on other forces. We will have force of friction. It will be in the opposite direction. That's why I put a negative force of friction. Then we will have plus n1. Now the component along will be cosine of 90 degrees minus beta. But we can simplify this and write sine of beta using what is called co-function relations, which I have a video about it. You can find it from the cards right now, also from the descriptions part. Now, this is equal to, by Newton's second law, mass times the acceleration. And I also proved Newton's second law. You can access it from the cards and also from the descriptions part. So we got this. Now, let's write a similar formula for the little mass. Why not? We have two masses, so let's write formulas for both of them. In that case, we will have mg. 
again again using same kind of reasoning we put sine of alpha then we have minus n1 it will be it would be cosine of 90 degrees minus beta but again using cofunction relations we just write sine of beta this is equal to little m times a the accelerations are the same because little m moves along with the capital m all right the box moves along with the cylinder that's why they have the same acceleration so we have this but i mean how does this help us in our in our search of angle beta okay we see we have beta but we have lots of quantities that are unknown force of friction the normal force and a how can we find them to find them i will so let's start, i mean which one should we use first let's solve for f uh, force of friction for the force of friction we can say let's do it with a different color with orange perhaps force of friction can be found using torque for the cylinder so we know we know newton's law for rotation torque is equal to moment of inertia times angular acceleration and the only force that exerts a torque on our cylinder will be the frictional force because all other forces go through the center and if we calculate the torque relative to the center only torque is done by the force of friction so we have it and the distance will be radius which is r if we call this the radius so this is the radius this is equal to what is the moment of inertia of a hello cylinder in this case well you can look it up it is going to be its mass times r squared then we have alpha now for alpha we know that rolling there is rolling without slipping rolling without slip, slipping is very important because this tells us this tells us that the acceleration is equal to the angular acceleration times the radius this is the condition for rolling without slipping so we substitute this for alpha alpha we will write a divided by r and we will make simplifications r simplify here and then r's cancel here to leave us with f the force of friction is equal to mass times the acceleration interesting this is nice so now i will substitute this here and let's do that on the new page and also i'm mean, look at this if i substitute it there and add it to both sides this will cancel and we will have a two here right so i'm just going to write that fact on the new page so we have we have mg sine of alpha i am just copying the formula that we just wrote plus n1 sine of beta and this is equal to 2 m a great and now we can you know what actually let's write the other one as well below it we have mg sine of alpha come on mg sine of alpha then a minus n1 sine of beta this is equal to mass times the acceleration cool now i want to figure out what n1 is to do that i will use the uh, little masses force diagram looking at it i can see that the forces in the y should add up to zero and i will benefit from that fact to write mg's cosine component so mg cosine of alpha should equal n1's vertical component n1's perpendicular component i mean which is going to be n1 it would be sine of 90 degrees minus beta looking at it here right but i am just going to write cosine of beta using co-function relations so if we solve for n1 we get that it is equal to mg cosine of alpha divided by cosine of beta cool so using that fact we can substitute this we will have 
let's substitute it. In the first one, you will have mg sine of alpha plus, for n1, I am writing mg cosine of alpha sine of beta divided by cosine of beta gives tangent of beta by definition. And I know that capital M is two times the small case M. So we have four times MA. Now, here comes the trick. Here comes the trick. And actually, let me write the other one and then show the trick. So we have mg, I am writing the other formula as well, minus mg cosine of alpha tangent of beta is equal to ma. If I multiply both sides by 4 in the below equation, 4, 4, 4, I can see then that this and this are equal to one another. That is incredibly useful. So let's use it. As we just said, these two are equal. So let's equalize them. For capital M, I am going to write 2mg sine of alpha plus mg cosine of alpha tangent of beta. This is going to be equal to 4mg sine of alpha minus 4mg cosine of alpha tangent of beta. Cool. Now, we see that g's cancel. This means that if we were to do this on another planet, we would get the same result. And also, masses cancel as well. That is always nice. Here, we can divide both sides by cosine of alpha. And why do we do it? Well, let me write it and then explain it. So, we have 2 tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta is equal to 4 tangent of alpha minus 4 tangent of beta. The reason why I did this is because alpha is equal to 45 degrees and tangent of 45 degrees is just 1. So we can write we have 2 plus if we add 4 tangent of beta to both sides 5 tangent of beta is equal to 4. So, in fact, 5 tangent of beta is equal to 2, which means tangent of beta is equal to 2 over 5. And if we solve for beta using the inverse tangent, we will get the inverse tangent of 2 over 5 as our final answer. This is it for this video. If you have any questions, please add them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.